Hey guys, what's up? How you doing? Is it all good? Good. Today I'm going to share with you three locomotion exercises for beginners. The crab walk, the role, and the rotational L-sit and how to connect them together and build a sequence. This video will be one of a series of videos about how to start movement training. Each time we'll go over different parts of it like mobility, handstands and so on. I want to do that because I want to make movement training more accessible to everyone. So if you're interested in learning more about it and want to join our amazingly positive and supportive community Community around the movement world, you're welcome to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Anyway, let's get started. Before we dive into the actual exercises, the starting point in almost all of our locomotion sequences is the deep squat. It requires ankle mobility and a healthy pair of knees, so if your knees have some problems, check with your doctor before trying these movements out. The deep squat is a resting position. It helps to relax the lower back, it improves digestion, and prepares our knees for low gait movements. If you can't get into it, try going as low as you can. It might not be the most comfortable position at the beginning, but with time, it will open up. Another thing you want to pay attention to is warming up your body. We'll be placing a lot of load on our hands and knees, so make sure to warm them up. If you want, you can check out my videos about wrist and knees bulletproofing. You can use these exercises to warm up as well. Anyway, the first drill is the simplest one of the three and is called the crab walk. Start in the deep squat and push one knee forward and move it to the other side. This position is called the B squat. From there, you want to send your back hand forward and to the front of your body. Then send the second hand and place it on the same line and then internally cross your front leg with your back leg, the one that was in the B squat. Transfer weight to it, release the other leg, send it forward and pull it back and finish in the deep squat position. Now, I know it sounds complicated, but I promise you it's not. Just watch how I do it a few times and you'll get it. Worst case scenario, you just won't get it and will never be a real mover. And that's really sad, but no stress. We want to do everything slowly and with control and make sure we raise our butt when crossing the legs and lower it when sending the leg forward and when we land back in the deep squat. Ugh. As far as how high you can lift your butt, I'd much rather you'd control the movement and do it slowly than force yourself to go higher than you really can and make it look messy. So take your time, play with the variation you feel comfortable with and with time you'll be able to smoothen it out and go higher with your butt. You might even be able to levitate just a tiny bit when starting to disengage the other leg before we send it forward, but don't worry about it. Just focus on what you can do right now. The second exercise is the role. We start from the deep squat position, get into the B squat and send our hand forward, but this time to the back of our feet, meaning our hand will be placed behind the line of our body. Then we want to twist our back and place the second hand on the floor and start to pull the leg that was in the B squat towards our farthest arm and place it on the same line, lift our butt up, transfer weight to the forward leg and rotate on it while straightening our back leg and doing a back CC. Then we want to pull our leg back to us and end up in the deep squat position. This movement is a bit trickier than the crab walk, but it's also much cooler, which is obviously why we're all here. I don't mind you not being able to lift your butt up so high as it requires some active compression abilities. What I do care about is that you do this movement slowly and with control. It doesn't have to look perfect, just make sure you own the movement and not vice versa. Also notice how I start with my butt close to the ground, lift it up when I'm in the middle of the movement and let it back down when I get into the back CC motion. Do the same. The third and last exercise is the rotational L-sit. This one is a bit trickier than the last two drills, so pay close attention. We start in the deep squat position, transition into the B squat, and we want to think about continuing this rotation we're doing with our body. So we place our back hand forward and to the front of our body. Make sure your palm is faced towards your body. It's a small but important detail. Without it, you'll fail miserably and regret it, for the rest of your life. Then we continue the rotation of our body and place the other hand behind and to the side of our butt and sit on the ground. Now our legs are crossed like an X and we want to untangle them. So we straighten one leg and then the other. The next step is to finish the circle we started. So we take the back leg and drag it across the other leg and rotate on our feet to end up in the deep squat position. I'm aware this isn't very easy to understand. So let me show you again from a different angle. We start in the deep squat, going to the B squat, place hands on the floor, untangle our legs, cross one over the other, finish the rotation and voila, we're done. Practice this variation a few times to get the gist of it and then you can start smoothing it out and make it look better. You can start to untangle the legs and cross one over the other at the same time without breaking it down one leg at a time 
and once you feel comfortable with it you can even do the entire drill in a straddle L-sit position with your butt levitating just a bit above the ground. So now that we have all three movements sorted out in our minds and we've played with them a bit we can start to connect them into a sequence. Build an order in your head of which movement you want to do first, second and third and just go and figure it out. Try to see how you can connect between them. Here I'm playing with a sequence of the rotational L-sit, then the crab walk and then the role. You can also connect them in a different order like I'm doing here, starting with a crab walk, moving on to the role and finishing it with the rotational L-sit. For each movement you do, work on the progression that suits you. It's fine if it's not the best variation yet, just work on connecting the movements. After some time and practice, you'll slowly want to introduce more flow between the movements, smoothening out the connections between each one. That's it. Obviously, there are more ways to connect these three movements together, so go and figure it out. You now have some toys to play with. M movement toys, just clarify. There are a lot more locomotion movements you can work on by the way. This video is just the tip of the iceberg. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like to learn more of them and if you have a specific one you want me to go over, let me know as well. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. It would really help me build this amazingly positive and supportive community we have here around the movement world. So thank you for joining. Anyway, have a good day and peace.